Hi, I'm Rick Hansen. I work for Boise Cascade Wood Products out of Kettle Falls. My job is to buy timber from landowners. What I do often is to meet up with landowners and to uh, negotiate timber. I have cruised most of my life. In cruising, I have set points, evaluate and appraise timber stands, and then uh, give that information to the landowner so they can make a qualified decision. Cruising is the a measurement of trees standing in the forest. This allows us to go in, measure diameters, heights, take form factors, and make an estimate of the volume in each tree. One of the skills foresters use to cruise timber is compass and pacing. To do this, they establish plots on a map, and then they use the compass and pacing to go and locate those plots on the ground. Siding compasses are used by foresters in the woods so that they may locate the plots accurately. A siding compass has on it usually a lid and a mirror and then a dial and the dial can be adjusted for declination for whatever location you are in. This is all based on declination which is an offset from true north to magnetic north. So the compass is comprised of a dial which has 360 degrees around the outside perimeter. On the inside of the dial there is the declination setting which is either east or west and is in the lower half of the dial. That is where you adjust your declination. Currently this compass is set at a declination of zero. So if you take a look at the black lines on the interior of the dial you will see that the line is set on zero declination. In this case, the declination is set with a key which is usually located on the lanyard. You either set the declination using the, the slot in the top or in the bottom of the compass in some cases. Other compasses, you have a dial which you can change your declination. And if you do not have either one, then your declination, you would have to add it or subtract it from your compass bearing to accommodate either east or west declination to get you to true north. Now that the declination is set, you want to sight your compass to the point that you are headed towards. Looking at the destination through the sight on your compass, you would line up the line on the mirror with the compass face and adjust your dial so that the arrow is inside the bracket. We're going to talk about pacing, which is a component of using a compass. Compass gives you direction, pacing gives you distance between two points. Your pace is determined using two steps. You're counting actually a pace. To determine pace, you need to go ahead and lay out a two points, know the distance between them. After you know the distance between them, you can step off your pace, you do that three times, and then divide by your average number of uh, the feet by the average number of pace. You want to establish a natural, even pace so that uh, you can maintain that all day long. You don't want to elongate your stride or shorten your stride. If you're going uphill, what happens? Your stride gets shorter. Coming downhill, your stride gets longer. If you start with your left foot, you will count your right foot each time it hits the ground. That is a pace. You want to make sure you are next to your marker so that you have a consistent step between the two set points. That was eight paces in 50 feet. So to calculate the math for your pace, we walked the distance between the two points three times. Each time it was eight paces. The total distance walked was 150 feet. 150 feet divided by 24, which was three times eight, gives me 6.25 feet per pace. When using a map, you use pacing and your compass to determine the distance and the direction. 
If you have a map, it always has a scale. A scale, you can take and measure the distance between point A and point B. And then on the ground, if you know one of those points, you can use your pacing to move between point A to point B and your compass gives you the direction. So as an example, if your map has one inch to 25,000 inches as a scale, you would take and measure between point A and point B. If that was two inches, you would then have 50,000 inches on the ground. You would then take your 50,000 inches and divide it by 12 inches, which would give you how many feet between those two points. At that point, you would divide your pace. Uh, in my case, it was 6.25 into that many feet, and that would tell you how many paces between A and point B on the ground. Using a compass is fairly straightforward, but you have to practice and you have to be consistent.